Okay, so we're just gonna wing it. <laughs> no, wing it man. All right, just do this. So um, it's been a while since we've recorded. It has a conversation. It really has. It's too bad there's nothing happening. There's no interesting news to talk no, about. No, there isn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's that's what's so sad. There actually isn't any news, like like real news. People are still dying of the Rona. Yes, that's the that's yeah. the underlying story that underlies yeah. everything. Yeah. In the United States. Yeah. Other people have other stories, but uh, that's our story here. People are still dying of the Rona. We're out for a walk, as you can hear, and. Um, yeah, I just I haven't been out walking in months. It's terrible. I mean, mm-hmm. oh, there's also waves of evictions going on. That's actually not being reported much, but there. The waves of evictions. Yeah, yeah. People losing their health care left and right. Left, right, center. There were also mass layoffs, including yeah. some large companies like Boeing. You know. Yeah. Um, what, what did I see? 20,000 Amazon employees have contracted COVID-19. Yes. Now, they have a million employees. Sure. So, to, get, to, to take it in context, but those are still 20,000 individuals that <laughs> didn't have to be sick in the first place. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah there's so many. So, I, I've been late with writing a newsletter. Yeah. I have a huge pile of notes of things I want to put in the newsletter and talk about, but yeah. it's all completely incoherent. That's oh, yeah. It's so hard to sometimes, but that's okay. And I haven't, so, so I haven't made any progress on it. I'm following you. <laughs> that's your first mistake. Yeah, that's why. And this is why we walk on the left side of the road. Well, I was going to go that way, but you were pushing me the other way. I was just trying to follow you. But <laughs> by leading. <sighs> we have this problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I try to follow you, we end up going nowhere. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> what? Uh, anyway, so it's a cold and overcast day today. It is damp we do not have our masks on we are outside by ourselves realize there are other people out oh well kind of no i mean coming up very soon oh hey look at that they're going back inside probably saw us the saw us coming yeah saw us coming man so um i don't know you want to try and look at the news from local up that's well, always the best way to start. Anything you're doing, I think. So yeah, so locally, um, starting in our own household. Oh yes, Bill. We just had a birthday. He turned seven years old. We planted him an apple tree. He has been asking for an apple tree since we started planting the garden in the spring. So he got an apple tree, and yes. it's, it's a Jonathan apple tree. Yes, yes. The thing is, he wants to plant it, and then the next day go out and harvest exactly. apples, right? So it is both a gift and a lesson. <laughs> and a pain in the butt because he's going to be asking us apples? every single day. Apples? Are there apples yet? If they're ready. Yes. Um, and you wanted to plant something else next to it? Um, well, close-ish. So they can uh, cross-pollinate. I uh, want to plant a Granny Smith. So what does that give you? More apples on both trees. But they don't become like... No, no, no. Like Granny Jonathan or something. No, no, that's not how it works. They're not... Okay. Yeah, you, you have to. It's more. You have to, have to graft this. You have to graft stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, apple genetics is complicated. Like citrus genetics is complicated. Complicated and weird. Yeah. Weird AF. But this is the idea. I don't Just know. scratch the butt. Not everybody's gonna have a. I never use that voice. I scratch my butt. <laughs> not everybody's. She's not actually scratching her butt, folks. Damn, Paul. You know. I'm ruining the f- breaking the fourth wall. Apparently. Um, not, uh, I had a thought. Apple genetics, like citrus genetics. Oh, no, but it was like, not every kid is going to get an apple tree. We're not planting, I don't think. Oh, we're not planting an orchard like that. 
But we are, we are going to plant a lot of hazels and blueberries and raspberries, some apples. Um, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of planting a lot of fruit and nut trees. Um, they attract a lot of wildlife. Yeah. So I'm not, so I'm not a huge fan of like having like a peach orchard or something in your yard. Yeah. I'm not against it either, but it's not, it's not for me. And we don't have a dog or a cat to try and balance out that ecosystem. Right. Right. So, so I'm not a fan, uh, personally. But uh, I do want to plant, I do want to get an arborist out to have them walk through the woods with us. Because I think we need to do a lot of work for the health of our trees. They appear to be predominantly oaks. And uh, they, they seem to be struggling. They should have wider trunks and be a little bit shorter, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to do some kind of repair work. And I can imagine we would take out a bunch of trees and plant a lot of oaks. So that's something I could get behind. In our woods. In our woods, right. Yeah. Doing some sort of, you know, some kind of light forestry management of our woods. But as far as like gardening and food planting, I'm thinking hazels, blueberries, raspberries. A um, couple of apple trees. Not too much in the way of peaches or pears or plums or anything. Although one good plum tree might be very nice. We could have those uh, those pickled plums. Very fond of those. Oh, the, yeah, umeboshi. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we also, you and I, this past week, Mm -hmm. We're feeling a bit sick. Yeah, kind of under the weather. And so I stayed home Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday. This is a, suddenly this is a busy the road. road. Oh. Yeah. A road's usually quiet as hell. Um, stayed home Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and got a COVID test. We both got checked. Checked. Checked for the Rona and, on Wednesday. And Thursday. Got our results. Results were negative. Again. Again. Thank, thank God. Which is great, but um, so many feels. Yeah, it's. So we're. Just, I'm just wondering. I mean, is this going to be? Is it going to be like this for the next year? Like every few every months. Every time some we have this uh, some mild symptoms of a virus. We like. Which is. <laughs> which happens. Which happens even when. We're we're actually fairly isolated. We do go grocery shopping, but that's kind of it. Well, here's the thing: if we really shopping. did get a like a cold or something, an actual cold, where did we get it? Yeah, where did that come because from? Because we've been masked and distanced and not leaving the house except for critical groceries trips. And, and medical care. Right? And right. I mean, and so, but that's like. That's a little worrying because if we're picking up random viruses at out the grocery in the world, stores, then there's no reason to think offices. we couldn't pick up COVID-19 too. Bing. So, our maybe our our you know maybe our regimen, maybe our procedures aren't as safe as we'd like to think. A, we are actually not 100% sure that it was a virus. A. No, and, we don't. Know. And B. There are several viruses that are mosquito-borne, and we've been getting slaughtered Reports, by mosquitoes. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. So I posted on Facebook. If I'm, if we're lucky, it's probably just a mild case of eastern equine encephalitis. And Ken was t joking with. He was like, "Yeah, go for the, the go, most, go most right for the rare, uh, rare exotic, rare exotic thing." And like, well, yeah. So we don't know. We don't. And know. We won't know. Most likely. Right. Um, that's not something you can routinely get a test for. Right. Because, you know, we do seem to be on the mend. And also yeah. there's no treatment, so... There's no treatment, right? In humans, other than supportive... Supportive care. Like, yeah. as, as with almost all viruses, the only treatment right. is supportive care. So, so with EEE, there's two kinds of cases. Yeah. You can have a, a systemic infection, mm -hmm. which acts like a lot of viruses. You, your joints ache. Right. Which is exactly what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. You're tired. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an immune response. Right. Right. I was tired and headachey. Yeah, headache. Um, if it does not get into your brain, mm -hmm. you know, across the blood-brain barrier, as they ah! say, then you don't um, have seizures. 
right. and stuff like that. <laughs> Which is so nice, you know. Which is nice. <laughs> Not having the seizures so, and stuff like that. So I think it is, because our symptoms were very limited and specific, Maybe it was and out, didn't huh? point dramatically towards COVID, you know. Yeah. But you never know. You hear about a lot of people who don't have the fever until quite late, right. you know, or, or whatnot. So I think it is possible because we've been getting bit constantly. Constantly. Oh, and like, no, and seriously, like at two in the afternoon in broad daylight, we'll be get, getting right. covered in bites. Last Saturday, I, uh, so Joy actually got us a bug shirt. Mm hmm like a looks like a top half of a beekeeper's outfit it has a mesh like yeah. uh, helmet in mm -hmm. a built-in like zip it up over your head it has a mesh like panels panel to look out of mm -hmm. and drawstrings at the waist and hands and it worked great while i was wearing it i did not have a single bite underneath the suit a single bite underneath the suit But um, it was also hot. Yes. And so every once in a while I would pull the helmet, the head thing open to like cool off for a minute or two. And in that minute. And then I had bites all over my forehead and scalp, right? Yes. So I like put it back on. And I also, I needed my hands free because I was trying to pick time with scissors and other, yeah. and mint with scissors and other I things where I kind of needed, needed my hands free. Need my hands free. <laughs> Yeah, you picked me, man. <laughs> Go ahead, any woman you want. Chose me. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, anyway, in that short, so so I because my hands were not going to be covered, I slathered them in our bugs, our insect repellent. Yeah, it did not work. Did not work. Bites all over your knuckles. Bites all over my fingers and knuckles. Mm -hmm. And through my socks. Yeah, that was impressive. Like, it, how long is your tongue that you're biting through a sock? <laughs> what is it? What are you even doing? So, when I go down here, yeah. this is where I get ch chased by dogs. Well, then don't suck. go down there? Off-leash dogs. So yeah. I guess we turn around. Yeah, but we want to go to the other side. Go to the other side. Yeah. Okay. Threatened by dogs, let's say, because yeah. they don't run away from them, but they come out and you're like, come at me, bro. Not too close, though. <laughs> like, if that dog coughs on me and gives me the run, I'm going to be very... Very, very displeased. Yeah, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, as we so, were saying. So, it could have... So, the symptoms could have been a mild case of EEE. -E -E. Could have been mild West Nile. It could also have been... When we get a lot of mosquito bites, you can have like a systemic immune, immune response. Reacts, just to the bites. Right. It's not any particular virus, it's just an immune response to the, all the bites. Right. And like, it's like, well, it could also be seasonal allergies, except I've been taking yeah, and Flonase, so... Uh, so, I don't know, maybe? Didn't seem... Anyway. It was a rough week. It's a rough week, anyway. So we had to... But it... And whatever we, we had, we slept all damn day for three days. We wound up sleeping a lot, and... It just kind of raised this thing, though, the situation the where, like, okay, so if one of us is sick, one of the parents is sick in the house, how are we going to manage that? Are we going to function? Like, even at all? Because it, we were trying to largely hide out in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. We can't really quarantine from Malachi, who is a nursing baby. Right. Um, and, we, and we can't entirely quarantine him from the rest right either. so he's like running back and forth between the other kids and us and what we're going to put a mask on him That's this seems like a good time to point out that uh human toppers are the repository of most diseases uh, most in humans. diseases <laughs> they're yes. like the natural the, the natural, natural wellspring of uh, you know, viruses they, and disease in the human population yeah where they sort of idle in toddlers and, <laughs> At a We're, background level. At a background level. While toddlers have access to their mother's immune system yeah. to uh, fight it off right. and learn how to make an immune system work. I mean, it, it's it's a good idea, but um, th that's where all the disease lives, just so you know. So, 
yeah, we did come out to watch a movie, and we're like sitting in our family room across, you know, away from the kids. Ten feet away from the kids with masks. masks on. I'm like, is this? This is. This, these are our lives now. This, this is our life. These are our lives. Now. Yeah. Okay. But the Just but like the wondering how to make this work was partly because, you know, the kids have chores and all that. <laughs> yeah. But if we're not like on them, they don't have like them. hovering over them. The chores don't happen. They don't happen. And even basics don't happen. Like, baby, Ellen will be running around with a dirty diaper and we're Asking hiding Asking people out. to change it for her. Yeah, she's actually using sign language to ask for help and they're That's not paying enough attention to... I mean, she'll make the little sign, make the help sign and change. help and change. And, and then she points at her diaper. Yeah. So unless you're, like, really thick, you should be able to figure out what's going on. No, they're just... It's just kind of clear that even after all these years, some of them are still just... Like, whatever. ...waiting for us to tell them before they're willing to do the basics. Mm -hmm. And it's very frustrating. Right. And... Yeah, we're kind of... <clears throat> kind of fed up. We're kind of fed up with the kids in that regard and kind of at our wit's end, like, well, so, we've kind of given up, we've tried to give up on violent parenting as a means of coercing the desired outcomes desired from our behaviors. desired behaviors. Because I mean, ultimately those those parenting practices are counterproductive. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> but all our like gentle parenting let's reason with them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. This time yeah. maybe they'll listen to reason. Uh, it's yeah. not we're not, we're not. Don't feel like that's getting us very getting us very far either. These days. Well, I think the the thing that that can be hard to do is to keep the relationship intact, and then people do things because of their relationship with you. Um, and children are no different. So yeah. if you nurture a, a loving and warm relationship, they will chip in because they love you. So yeah, we tell them how much we needed their help and how much. This, how it makes us feel when they don't provide it and all that and they cry and like weep and gnash and wail and <gasps> rend their garments and say I'm so sorry they're like great wash the dishes <laughs> that'd be great that's what we need that's what we need help with well and also like that sort of um, but you know I don't feel like you love me you never let me pick the movie or whatever it is you don't let me use heroin. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Back Actually, Veronica's like, I don't even get to drive. I'm like, throw the car keys. Here, go. Yeah, go. Knock yourself out. Take it for a spin. Take it for a spin. Add it. Add it. So look. What? Uh, but alas. Alas. Okay. So that's been going on within our own home this week. I'm fortunate in that I could take three days off work. Yep. And it didn't come they in have a policy. Yep. Hi there. They have a policy where if you submit a COVID test and it comes back negative, you, the time that you spent like waiting for the COVID test, they give you time off without taking it out of your vacation time this year. Yeah, boy. Which is great. So. So yeah. So I didn't use up a chunk of my vacation days. Right on. Um, and a lot of people don't have that. Nope. So. It would be nice if that was federal policy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? It, the, the number of days that people might need it's due to either diagnosed COVID or, or suspected or suspected is like an or, extra two to three weeks. Or if you actually have long-term symptoms, could be a very long time. You can be, you could be, not infectious after a couple, after a week or two, mm -hmm. but still quite sick and yep. unable to work. Yep. So COVID disability is going to be a serious thing. Yep. And not to mention, we're not entirely clear whether our life insurance would cover death. That's true. We gotta. We gotta dig that one out because this is a pandemic. This may absolve them from paying life insurance. Right. So, what's the point of having very good life insurance 
that we've paid re reliably into every month for decades to try and help our family in the event that one of us dies. This is a good point to mention the difference between whole life insurance and term life insurance and why your insurance salesman wants to sell you whole life insurance or rather pardon me prefers to sell you term life insurance because term life insurance lasts for a specific term and costs less and then it ends abruptly ends abruptly and you're not covered so if you die the day after your term is done they right. don't pay anything that's, the money's gone. That's why it's called payment. term, because it's terminal. Right. <laughs> you think you're kidding. Uh -huh. But whole life lasts your whole life. Once you buy it, once the policy's paid off, you have it for the rest of your life. And at any point you die, under the terms of the contract, suicide doesn't count anymore. Oh, so, you, to, so you can still kill yourself? After the first two years. Oh, okay. After that's the first good. two years. That's comforting. <laughs> isn't that comforting? <laughs> now you can kill yourself. I guess that's pro something, pro choice or something? Her choice. Yeah. So, after two years, if you commit suicide, they still pay out, and uh, and that lasts your whole life once it's paid for. Okay. You can borrow against it. You can this. You can that. It's it's good stuff, right? So, although we... typically you want to buy that when you're young. Yeah. Um. Well. The, like yeah, like in your thirties, you want to buy. We're not young whole anymore. Life. Yeah, you want to buy a whole life policy in your 30s, pay it off by your 40s. If you do that kind of thing. The other strategy, the other strategy is to buy term life and then, because you're paying less, right? Yeah. And put the savings into your assets, which is your home. Yeah. Right. That's the other strategy. That's also a good strategy. It can be. The savings. <laughs> <laughs> well, the savings is significant because, uh, you know. A comparable uh, whole life the money policy. money you would otherwise spend. That assumes right. you have the money you would, would otherwise, otherwise spend. spend. Which yeah, is a go. pretty big assumption. That's a big assumption. But, you know, it's there. Anyway. And so that's another strategy. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is life sometimes. So, But that's the difference between term and whole life insurance. Okay, cool. Well, we'll have to think about what to do with our current policy and all that. But yep. um, off air. Off air. So... The uh, this endless traffic today. I don't know. Is everyone out, everyone's joy riding because it's Saturday? It's it's true. People are out for a drive because the weather's bad. They don't want to go for a walk. Weather's well, finally good to but, be clear. Well, okay. It's God. It's cold and gray, but it's not raining right now. It's only been raining lightly today. It's in the like high fifties. It's great. Beautiful. The temperature is very nice. It's a little damp. Hmm. Takes all kinds, yeah. But, but the bugs so, aren't out terribly badly because it's right. cool enough. So that was that was part of why we had so many mosquitoes recently. Was oh, the uh, it was, was the so smoke warm and wet and smoky? The smoke from so uh, it was dark enough that they could be out in the sun. It was dim that even in the after early afternoon, when they would normally be too sunny for them, even though it wasn't cloudy, it was hazy enough that they were out biting in force. Yeah, oh, it's awful. And it lasted long enough that the whole population went up. But yeah, now like three months ago, people would, the crane road would be full of people walking. So yeah. now people are joyriding. Because, right. yeah, this is a nice road to joyride down. It's really beautiful. Right. Yeah. So the other news, speaking of locally, so that's kind of like in our household. It's hyper local. And then, yeah, <clears throat> and then in, our, in our county... Um, there's a COVID spike happening, spike in cases directly related to in-person instruction. At the university. At the university's... Premier School of Public Health. Plural, yeah. Ooh. University of Michigan is doing in-person classes. Like an ass. A number of universities around the state are doing the same. And... And you know, in all those counties, there's this spike. Isn't that there's weird? There's a spike in cases. So this is one of the reasons that I wanted to get a COVID test after feeling these symptoms. Oh, right. Was because we had been... We at, had a couple of... We had some right. close calls with people where, despite everyone being masked, people were just like completely, in your business. completely disregarding any kind of spacing or distancing. Right, no, they were all on and me. I was at Trader Joe's last week. Trader Joe's both times. And um, 
Despite doing my best to stay away from people myself, people kept crowding in. What is that? Someone, this is what I was t that dumping I was telling you about. Oh, people are dumping construction debris or trash. Yeah, because that looks like a restaurant, actually. Along our... Oh, by the power line. Along our road on the easement for yeah. the power... Wow. That's, that's a real dick move. It is a real dick move. Yeah. So, yeah, Trader Joe's not respecting distancing. Oh, yeah, people just... Um, just like cutting in and around and also just blocking the aisle and be, they were like parents and students standing yes. there occupying the whole aisle like talking loudly looking at all the products and blathering about them which also spreads aerosols and blather loudly yeah. and they just cut in in front or behind you while you're standing there and waiting for them to, to give you enough space to pass by. But, yeah, whatever. You know. <clears throat> yeah, so I felt like that was a very unsafe shopping experience. And I was about, I was about, you were there, because I had tried to go there. You Saturday tried, before. and the lines were really long. Well, it wasn't just that the lines were long. I don't mind waiting in a long distance line out of doors. Yeah. Everyone was crowding into the six feet circle. Oh, in, in line. In the line. In line. So in line, well, I didn't, it was the lot. Oh, oh. Poor beastie. I told you we could get a dead squirrel if you needed one. It looks pretty fresh. Yeah. I'm not I'm not skinning it. Okay. We're looking at roadkill for dinner. Yeah, you know. You live in the country, it comes up, okay? Yeah. But you anyway. want to get them really fresh. Really? Like like within if minutes. If you hit them yourself, that's, that's ideal. Then you get to keep them. You know, the Midlands they have had deer for a year and a half. <laughs> People if you hit a deer with your car and kill the deer in Michigan well it's it's true in other states too yeah. you can if you can get a um, pe yeah. piece of form to fill out that says you're allowed to keep the deer right and then if you you know if you're gonna know how to butcher it and um, free you know pack it pack it up and whatnot that's process just free it, meat. that's just free meat it's great high quality meat and mm -hmm. I don't want to you know, hit a deer Waste with our car. It's very dangerous. You right. can be killed doing that. Yes. Or your car totaled at the minimum. Yeah. But, um... I still have that car. Yeah, well, the car wasn't that, that badly damaged. Mm -hmm. But if we ever did and everyone survived except the deer without injury, that. I'd be like, yeah, let's... Let's get the permanent eat it. Let's get the permanent eat it. you got to get it to a place that can process it. I'm not going to... I don't know how to... Process the deer? Well, it's the same as a rabbit, just big. <laughs> you need a, you need some some serious space and well, some you need tools. some serious space. You need some heavy duty tools, and you need to be really really strong. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, although I know a woman that she and her mother they could dress a deer in twenty minutes. <laughs> Damn. Yes, people. Ooh. I grew up with people who did this all the time during hunting season. They knew what to do. I never. Yeah. No, no one in my family ever did that. So no, no. I never learned. I only ever I only ever dressed and killed small game. Yeah, but um, yeah. Anyway, anyway as, as an aside, as an aside, venison is delicious. You should eat some if you get a chance. But about these motherfuckers at Trader Joe's. However, venison in the Saginaw Valley near the river. I is, just gave you an intro back. I know, but I. What you got to One thing. I one thing. Okay, finish, one more thing. Which is venison caught. Uh, in certain parts of the Saginaw area near the river, yeah, you can't eat that. Is considered Very potentially dangerous. tainted with dioxin. Dioxane. So yeah, that's that's very sad because the Saginaw River or dioxin. Like, which one is? Oh, I don't know. No, Dow is dioxin. Yeah, Ann Arbor is dioxin. Right, it's dioxin. Yeah. So you're not uh, supposed to. Not supposed to eat deer or fish caught in the river. Right. It's well, you know, north of uh, Midland. Sure. The water is marvelous. The deer and the sure. fish are yeah. actually so, choice. Sure, if you get it in a, a place that's not contaminated. But the Tittipawassee, yeah. north of uh, Midland, is actually really, really great water. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a prime fishing and hunting area. Yeah. Whereas once you get south of Midland, it's all trash. Yeah. None of it should be eaten. People do. Poor people do. Right. Anyway. But, anyway, where but, yeah. were we? Motherfuckers at Trader Joe's. Oh, well, then I, I went to Costco the next night just for a quick trip to grab a few things. And people were doing the same thing same there, crowding. 
I was yeah, like, Ugh. yeah, but and, the, and this is the thing, I didn't even go in because the crowding was so bad in the flipping line. Yeah, where you're supposed to stand on your stupid ass marker. Well, the line was fine when I went, but it was crowded. People were crowding inside the store. Right. So that's in where a very I, disconcerting yeah. way that I have not seen. Right. No. 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 All year. All year. It, it was very. It was actually really quite disturbing. And ultimately, I ended up leaving and not going in. Right. But I did this thing, which I felt was stupid in retrospect. You waited until the going all the way through the line. Well, no, I was like in the line. It was worse than that. I would get in the line. People start crowding me. I get out of the line. And they're like, "Well, I'll let the line go down." And I get in the line again. I did that like oh, so, four times. So you were in the line over and over again. Right, it was stupid, and people did it every time. And like the fourth time, I'm like, "I'm just going home. <laughs> this isn't going <laughs> to work." Wasted like two an hour, hour, like an hour, like an two hour. hours, two yeah. hours, right? And I, and I was just like, you know, but I was in that fallacy where like. I drove all the way here. I have my cost. shopping yeah. list. I just want to go do the thing. Sunk, I, sunk time cost. Policy. Right. I just needed to cut, cut the trip cut the loose. Losses. <laughs> cut my losses when people were crowding right. in the line because they weren't going to be better in the store. Right. But no, you get really like attached. I'm going to finish this errand. I'm going to finish this list. Right. And I was in that. I was in that headspace yeah. deep. So, oh, yeah. Well. So it was. It was a stupid trip, and. I, I did apparently I did not catch the, the Rona, which I'm very grateful for, and I hope I've learned my lesson. There's such thing as false negatives, though. No, that's true. And sometimes it takes an extra few days for the test Symptoms results to show up. But it's likely we didn't catch it. It's like we didn't. We haven't gotten any sicker. Blah blah blah. But I, I've also learned some good information about myself and the psychology. Your tendencies, yeah. Right. The, the psychology of staying safe. That there are certain things where. Um, it's the thing I always tell the kids about uh, standing up for people, so standing up for what's right. Yeah. That you have to do it in small, uncomfortable ways, because when it's time for you to do it for the real, big thing. Yeah. You won't have what it takes when the big thing comes. Right. So I need to just accept that some of the stuff I need to do to stay safe is weird, and seems ridiculous. Seems so. ridiculous. It's going to cost me time. Right. It's going to cost me trips, and that's the deal. The thing is, I had actually no trouble being, well, except general nerves, you know, mm -hmm. being really, really very observant about all my mask and glove protocols and all that for the first few months. Right. If everyone had done that and if we had done what had to happen... Oh, just taking the hit. Taking just, the hit. Just understood this is, how, this is what has to happen. Supported everyone financially who needed it. Um, We'd be done. We'd be done. Well, actually, I'm going to go and support everyone financially full stop. Right. So, yeah, you don't want to get... As soon as I said that, I'm like, yeah, uh, you know... We don't need to get don't in the get weeds of who means needs... testing for... Yeah, that's bullshit. But for everyone to stay safe... Everyone to stay safe. Stay we'd be done. Stay safe. We'd be done. It would be over. It would already be over. Right. We would you have know, a lot of yellow zones. Uh, yeah, sure. But a lot of things would be opened back up. And I might be able to, you know, go to, go to work out or something, you know? Or something. So, you might be able to find a, a new third place. Yeah. Anyway, we wouldn't be so panicked about everything. But um, we wouldn't be seeing another wave rolling in. Yeah. Um, oh, what? oh, well, but over time, as this drags on, you know, even the most uh, careful people can tend to get a little sloppy with their, like, hand sanitizing and masks and everything and this, else. And the order touch, and the oh, I touched the car door. Well, and, th and this is the thing. I didn't sanitize the car door. Oh, the mail. Oh, my God. The mail. It's, start, it's starting to really wear on us to, like, not be able to touch the mail for th extra days and sanitize all the groceries, you know. Mm -hmm. We're still doing it. Although, I have to say, the kids have gotten <coughs> into that space very well. They have a routine When now. stuff comes to the house, like, is it sanitized? They check with each other. And with the adults. They have a routine, and they're washing their hands. Some of Good. them, at least, are washing their hands very yeah. diligently. Yeah, look, Eleanor is washing her hands diligently. Okay. Like, Good. Eleanor on up. Yeah. So the only one not washing his hands regularly is, uh, is Malachi. It's a baby. It's a baby. Right. Otherwise, they've got a good hand washing game. But I know that when, when you and I first went out for these large grocery runs together, we oh, were right. wearing gloves along with our masks. Right. And... We were policing each other to be able to say, oh, you touched that, now you have to change gloves. Or something, right? Or you didn't sanitize this first. 
Don't touch the outside of your mask. Right. Well, you t first of all, you touch the outside of your mask less now. Yeah. And, so, and we stopped wearing gloves, I think in April or May, when we had a shopping trip and our hands were so sweaty. And they were just tearing all the time. They were tearing all the time. And really, I... And I really could, you could like pour water out of them. Yeah, you could pour liquid out of them, because we were so sweaty. And I basically concluded that this is more of a disease vector. Right. <laughs> um, but as cold and cold and flu season, official cold and flu season approaches yeah. again, I, I'm, and it's colder now, yeah. I, I'm going to put gloves back on, personally. Maybe. We started out with bleach wipes, too, which oh, ruined a, a lot hassle. of things. Yeah, it ruined my hair pair. And we don't have bleach wipes anymore, but we don't have enough alcohol wipes either. So no, I'm like fine. trying to spray everything with liquid alcohol. Well, some things. Which like in the car, I think, is important when you are... Basically, my frame of reference is clean zones and not clean. Right. Clean and not clean. And so our home is a clean zone. Right. If it comes into our home, it either has to be clean to be in the clean zone, or it can't come in our home. Yeah. Full stop. Hey, hey, there's a whole other road over here, friend. Oh, that's it. That older couple is actually just doing laps. They're doing loops. I've seen them like this like the third time I've seen them. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Hey, whoops. Sorry. Well, so I know I keep catching myself like, oh shit, I touched the mail, then I touched my steering wheel. Right, you know, right. like all this, all those sorts of things. And I was, I was wearing gloves to get the mail. Well, and you were actually being a lot more intentional about the order. Right, and right. I've just kind of, I've got so many things to worry about now that it's like overwhelming to try and concentrate on all of these things simultaneously. Well, and the idea was to turn some of them into habits, so you didn't have to concentrate anymore. Right. But, but, some things you have to adjust on the fly, like the gloves. Yeah. Which I think once the point, once you get to the point where it's actually a um, disease vector of its own. Right. Uh, uh, it's not, you're not adding anything, any layer of safety. So, but, I mean, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. There's a second wave starting. Yep. And things are going to get real bad this fall. Yep. And so we actually have to police ourselves more, more. over time rather than less, less, which is... Really hard. Really hard. I did yeah. not want, I did not want to be working in the office. Oh my lord, no. Right okay. now, I can't not work in the office. Because I need to do, the things I need to do require a whole bunch of bulky gear, which I can't really bring home. I don't have space for it. Mm -hmm. So. So there you are. I can do some things. As soon as I can, I'll be working at home again. But right now our basement is in the process of flux. We're rearranging a bunch of things, mm -hmm. packing and organizing a bunch of things. And I don't, I don't really have a desk downstairs at the moment that I can even use. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. Right. <sighs> but I do need to get back to trying to work most days from home mm -hmm. as much as I can. Yes, that's priority. That's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. My office is relatively safe. I'm one of only a handful of people on the whole second floor. Like and five people. Right. Yeah, it depends on who's in that day because some people are working from home. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, maybe eight some days. Mm -hmm. But not a lot and it's a big floor. Yeah. And I'm in an area with only one other person really at his desk all the time. But... What? He keeps taking his mask off. Wait, it's in your area? I, you didn't tell me that part. I don't know if we should out him by name. Oh, sorry. Uh, Not in my area, but it, you know, in that section okay. of the upstairs, in that corner of the upstairs. Okay. So I have the little alcove. He has his desks, I don't know, 30 feet away. Jesus, Paul. But I, I'm getting more and more pissed at him. Yeah. Because I keep asking him to put on his mask. He keeps not doing it. Well, he takes it off. I Did mean, yeah, know? we got... I take mine off when I have to have eat. some water or, you know, eat a protein bar or something. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not really going anywhere for lunch anymore. Right. Um, and that's an allowed <laughs> case. You're allowed to do that. Right. But I try to keep it back on my face most of the day. 
but uh I think giving us some space. Alright. Yeah, the other guy wasn't giving us any space. Alright. And I'm I'm getting sick of that and it's making me nervous and he's doing this even though Nervous and angry. Yeah, nervous and angry. Mm -hmm. And it's not good. And you were suggesting, well, why don't you just talk to him reasonably about why he why won't insists he? on not wearing a mask? And my answer was, because I'm not sure I would be able to emotion regulate my emotions properly during mm -hmm. that conversation. And I don't want to start an incident. Yeah. You don't want, basically, you don't want to get into a fist fight. I don't want to get in a fist fight with a co-worker. Yeah, that's true. You don't want to pepper spray him either. <laughs> I don't want to get into a fist fight. I don't want to start screaming obscenities. That's not also a good way to spread viruses. It is. Yeah. Oh, I, I frequently don't engage. I'm, I'm, I am the sort of person who would kind of engage people who are misbehaving in public, but I don't engage the non-mask wearers because I don't want to start a shouting match. And you know what? If they somehow, like, didn't get the memo yeah. at this point, yeah. it's not going to be a productive discussion. It's not a productive conversation, no. And that's... Part, that's why, because I'm going into it already with like a anger. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, it's true, it's true. Anyway, so that's at work. That's at work. Yeah. But he's one guy, and most people in the office are very diligent and careful. I don't really have to spend much time near him. Mm -hmm. And he does have a mask on part of the day. Right. Talk to me about ventilation. I think the situation? ventilation is relatively good. I can't, I'm not measuring it. I don't okay. know. There's a huge HVAC system on our roof and it's running. Okay. So, but I don't know in terms of cubic feet, whatever. I, I don't know. But yeah. I feel relatively safe in my office more than I do in Trader Joe's the last time. Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, or Costco. Costco is usually, I feel, usually pretty good. good because it's a huge building. They have massive ventilation. The reason they have, it's not some, just out of, out of virus safety that they have ventilation going. Yeah, no, it's... It's so that you don't smell the seafood of going off right. up by the registers, you know. Right. Which you would, which you or, would. Or, you know, the whole place ventilation. isn't filled with the smell of, of rotisserie chicken. Although they like, they like it when the place is filled with the smell of bread and with history chicken. That they want. Well, that if it sells stuff, they mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, the vegans would complain or something. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Anyway. So much traffic. Yeah. And everyone is joyriding yeah. down the prettiest street. It is just about the prettiest street in the area. Right, it really is. There's a dog with his head sticking out of the car, barking at everyone they drive past. So is that is that taking your dog for a walk now? <laughs> it's, I feel like <laughs> that's that's the current version of taking your dog for a walk. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so up a level then, looking at state news. State news. Oh yes. Why don't you describe this one? Because you're probably following it more closely than I am. The Michigan State Supreme Court just struck down all the governor's uh, executive orders to limit the spread of COVID-19. It basically said that after her orders after a certain date not constitutional. were not constitutional. It cannot be enforced or maintained. And the that thing, was Friday's news. The thing news. is, she, this is Friday's news drop. We've had dozens of... She actually had like dozens or even a hundred specific yeah. executive orders. orders. Right. So... It's a lot. It's a lot. And some of them include things like gyms will remain closed. Right. Now, mind you, I said this on this podcast at the beginning of the pandemic. We, you, we had a conversation. The health department is supposed to do that anyway. You talked about how it was the role of... It's the role of the county health department to do these things. And the public health officers have a surprising amount of power. Sweeping power. For to do this. this kind of thing. For this reason. But and it's usually time limited. It is time limited, and they have to make the case again, and they can use the case they made the first time. In this case, we could because the caseloads aren't diminishing. The caseloads are diminishing. So this was the responsibility. So 
actually as damning as that decision is. I, I'm going to go on the record that I agree that she never should have been making executive orders of this kind anyway. Those powers belong to the county and state public health officials, and they should have exercised them. Huh. Um, okay. So, I think it's the correct interpretation of the law, right? Yeah. However, I don't know. I don't feel very um, warm and fuzzy about our county and state public health officials who were apparently asleep at the wheel. Right. right. So who were waiting to do their jobs for some reason? Because this to was exercise the authority they actually they have. had. Yeah. And part of and that's part of what the justices said is that, well, this is actually the public health department's responsibility, and it already has the powers to do these things. She should not be doing the governor things. should not be doing, doing these things. things. So, so are, I actually said that. So are they going to step up now and like put in replacement <laughs> orders to replace this, this I, I, th I, the safety activities that? I don't know that they will. Yeah. They did not step up to begin with. Right. I don't know that they will. Right. So that's that's my concern about it is, um, yes, while that is technically true, that's kind of like what's been standing between us and like just, I mean, straight up mayhem. Yeah. Just, I mean, really, just straight up mayhem. Because, I mean, let me, let me put this in perspective. Before there were mask orders, executive mask orders on the books, you know... Um, there's a certain rabbi that I know. Yeah. That right. Okay. He was getting into fights with people at the park. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Good so, for him. But like, if we're in a situation where that person is in fights with strangers in public about this. Yeah. Um, we're looking at it straight up mayhem without some kind of legal structure for our accepted norms of behavior. Yeah. Because a lot of businesses, before that, they would have signs up everywhere about wearing masks and how you're required to wear a mask and blah, blah, blah. And people were waltzing around without masks and getting into violent confrontations with store staff. They were literally barging in and trying to push their way past store staff. Right. On the grounds that they had a legal right, right not to, to wear a mask oh, oh, or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, right before the executive orders on masking went into effect, we talked about this. We had this encounter at IKEA. At IKEA. So I need to pause for just a moment. I'm really sorry, but I need to change the batteries. Go. Oh. Because this thing is reading low. So. Oh, they probably missed that whole thing. No, it's still recording, but okay. I don't want it to fail suddenly. Okay. So I'm going to break this into two parts. All right, two parter, guys. Okay, we're back. Fortunately, I anticipated this problem. Oh, yes. And carried batteries, a spare set of batteries with us. Just in case. Right. So, we had this problem at IKEA, people literally trolling. Trolling. Like, they'd wear a mask to get in and then take them off wow. and proudly barge around talking, talking loud. About and blah, 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 getting in everybody's blah, face. Blah, unless a be. store employee was nearby, in which case they'd meekly put their masks back on. Yeah. And Anyway. Yeah. It was, it's a real shitty move. Well. So we're going this, back there. We're going back there. This is going to be... Unless, no, unless there's some, unless the public health department steps in, or, or there's an appeal, or emergency or appeal, or suspension, or something, as soon as people hear that these these mandates are unconstitutional, yeah, it's unconstitutional. I'm not wearing that thing. They're I'm not going wearing to, a face diaper. They're going to go back to this trolling behavior, and it's probably going to increase. Yep. Um, even though. In a business, they're in private, private property. property. You have to do what they ask to be in the building. But, you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> so. I mean, these are the people who always say that. Well, you can't protest at borders. It's private property. They can arrest you. <clears throat> Get the cops. Anyway. So, there's. So, I'm. This is worrying me. Not just because there's a spike in cases happening, but because. We're going to start to see a lot of trolling behavior and yeah. and 
probably confrontation behavior. Right, right. It's gotta get it's gotta get violent and testy. I put I mean like day one when the orders were in effect, a man was murdered. A man, a man was killed. Yeah, yeah. He's knifed to death. Yeah. Oh jeez. In Flint. In Flint. Oh, it's awful. I well put, no, he knifed a guy and then the police shot him. Right. I put a um I put my pepper spray on my keychain. Yeah. So that it will be in my pocket. But do you think you can follow, engage the emotional regulation you need to use it only in defense? That's going to be interesting if it happens. I, my first response, I think, will be to try and back away. If someone corners me, they get a verbal threat. Dangerous one cornered. Well, a verbal warning. That a verbal warning that I'm armed. That they're going to get a face full of pepper spray if they don't back the fuck off. Yeah. And then they get a face full of pepper, pepper spray. spray. All right. Well, at least you've walked through a plan. I do. I have walked through a plan. So, but no, I'm not going to go after people. Thank goodness. If someone is retreating or giving me space. They can retreat and give you space. Uh, what is that? Spider web? I don't know what that was, but I'm not touching it. Something across hanging in the air. Yeah. The, um... Did I, did I already tell the... The Meyer story? I don't know. The I don't know. Tell the Meyer story. Because, yeah, right after you got you me... You guys are all stuck at home. It's not like you have anything better to do. <laughs> listen to my... Listen to me right and tell the same story five times. So, any... No, seriously, though. I was at a Meyer, and uh, this was right after you'd gotten pepper spray and handed it out. I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world, I got to say. You I think I did... T- you I did didn't t- say that. Well, no, not... Well, okay, dumbest thing in the world is probably exaggerated. But um, I thought it was overkill. I thought, when would we ever have a... I thought it was overkill too at the present. Right. I was imagining things continuing to get worse. Well, so and so it felt like an overkill, and I felt it was you know because it's, it felt like overkill, it felt ridiculous. Okay. But I put it in my purse and I went on about my day. I went to Meyer. Yeah, it was the beginning of um, farmers market, and I want cash to go to the farmers market. And I go in, and this guy has a child in a shopping cart and he's like trying to charge the elderly greeter who's standing there with a walker. The man was probably 75 years old using a walker. Yes. And standing there greeting people and explaining that they have to wear a mask to get inside. So I had the pepper spray, mask orders were not in effect. Right. But Meyer had an internal mask order. Right. On the door. On the door. Posted. And so this elderly man, and I have to say, standing his ground against a guy who's probably 20, 30 years younger than him, and pretty beefy, maybe six, inch, maybe six inches taller. Yeah. And he's got this cart, and he's getting ready to ram this guy. So I just made eye Conservatives, contact. is this you? <laughs> is this you? Is this your heroism? Attacking elderly men at the grocery store? Who are forced to work shitty... Jobs as jobs. greeters to try and <laughs> on a walker supplement their disability or whatever. The so, social security, it is. yeah. Honestly, so so I made eye contact with the aggressor and stuck my hand in my purse and put my thumb on the, the trigger uh, on the not the trigger the the well I guess it is the trigger on the pepper spray. Yes. And I just held my hand in my purse and looked at him. I gave him the mom look of shame. Yes. Like. You ashamed of yourself? <laughs> I didn't say anything. I just looked at, him. and that's a pretty powerful look, I have to say. So he kind of like stood there, and this, he had a child with him, right? Because at first I was thinking training up, training up the next the generation, generation of for to believe in liberty and freedom, freedom for all, except these low wage workers. So my because my first thought was to like turn the car over so we can slam the guy because he you know could have really injured him. Yes. But then I didn't want to turn a car over with a child in it. Right. And that's when I thought of the pepper spray. And the next thing I thought was, is this actually happening? Is well, this actually, wanna, actually here? I just want to make clear, I'm not hoping to have to use it. No, I did not pepper spray I'm not guy. hoping, but I practiced with it back when we had packs of wild dogs running amok in our n- neighborhood in Saginaw. And I, and I, and I did not feel right. inappropriate carrying pepper spray right. for the wild dogs. Um, yeah, no. So I, I am not hoping to use it. No, we're not to I use have it. a whole, like, you know, I try to, to get away from people who are behaving dangerously in public 
if I can't get away, people get a verbal warning. Maybe I had a step where they, you know, I brandish it and say, you're going to get a face full of pepper spray. And what happens then? Do they pull a gun on me? Maybe they then might pull a gun. <laughs> they might pull a gun. Well, that's the, that's the finish of my story. Yeah, I just anyway. stuck my hand in my purse and right. made eye contact with the guy. Right, right. And he backed down and just left the store. And the, and the greeters looked at me and was like, he has to wear a mask. He has to wear a mask. <laughs> that's all there is to it. That's all there is. And I was like, yeah, I know. Hero. And so I left, right? King. You <laughs> pick up his curry. Yeah. So, um... That, it didn't occur to me until later. I was telling someone the story, and I was like, "Oh, that other guy thought I had a gun in my purse." It's possible. <laughs> yeah. Or he didn't. He thought it he was a chance. He didn't know. He didn't know, and he yeah. did not want to find out. Right. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. I I don't want to play that game of chicken where I just stick my hand in my purse with nothing in there, right? Yeah. But um, but I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's enough to defuse a comp. But it, that was the thing. I just actually stood there and looked at the guy, and that was enough to defuse well, that situation. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to add that to my like arsenal of my list of um, progressive uh, escalation tactics. Oh, maybe there's the maybe there's the the, the glare, the, the glare. glaring. I think they'll let you want to de-escalate. I think that's what you want. Well, yeah, the de-escalation is to try and get out of the situation. To get out of the situation, right? But let's say he has me. He's got your corner. corner. There have been oh, gang. Or he's, been or he's got a hostage, right? He's got, he's got this greeter. There's yeah, a hostage. Yeah, right. I mean, I, yeah, I would use it to defend the elderly person. Jesus right. Christ. Right. But no, there were. There's a video of like gangs of people going into Target with masks, and then they all pull off their masks simultaneously, like link arms and walk abreast through the aisles, yelling to everyone, "Take off your mask! Take off your mask! Taste the Taste air of freedom the- again!" You know, like oh, Jesus Christ. If they came bearing down on me, I actually would deploy. <laughs> I just deploy. I would deploy the pepper spray like, there's your freedom, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. it's... So that's the state level. Yeah, that's where we are as a state. Um, they just fucked like it's always Just there. trying to stay safe. And it's then nice I think me. I think I saw my phone pinging with some kind of national news. Yeah, no. It's not worth talking about. It's not worth talking about. <laughs> oh, I'm going to talk about I it. I think there's a Supreme Court justice up, up on the docket. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we could talk about her. Yeah. I, I mainly, the thing I have to say about her is that... Uh, Barrett. Yeah. <laughs> Her initials are ACD, right? And every time I see them, I see all cop- cops are bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, no, they mean the, just, uh, the, the justice to be, right? Because you so, keep clicking like and then realizing, oh. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, I will say this first. Yeah. That of the list of people that the administration would nominate... Um... She's probably the least offensive of the field. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, like, make a list. Make a list of who you think this administration would nominate. Right. And she's probably the least objectionable person on that list. Attila the Hun was not available for comment. Genghis Khan actually just sent back a head. We don't know who's yet. (laughs) So, you know. So Could be worse. We talked about how um, Barrett's being attacked because she's a member of a rather kind of this evangelical evangelical sect, sect and co- that engages in some cult-like behavior. Yeah. So do I. I, you know, I, I eat this dead guy every week. <laughs> Drink his blood I, in a ritual sacrifice. Do I have to talk about the definition, the difference between a sect and this a might be a good place to talk oh, about. God damn it. Cults and sex and definitions. Okay, so one of the characteristics that makes something classified as a cult instead of a sect mm-hmm. is that a cult is operating around and centered around a living guru or teacher, spiritual leader. Oh, they have a living spiritual leader? Like other than the Pope? Don't they? Not, not that I'm aware. Okay. They engage in... Maybe, so maybe this thing doesn't qualify as a cult. Yeah, I, I refer to them as a sect. But when you start to like 
some other characteristics involve the way their finances are handled. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Whether or not people give over all their income and property and how it's handled, if there's any transparency to that process or whatnot. For example? Um, how households are handled. Mm-hmm. You know, do, does you everyone sleep in a barrack? <laughs> right. Or what? Or what? Um, yeah. And are they, are, are they actually advocating... Um, violating laws like against bigamy and things like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, the, a lot of nuns could fall into that category. Well, sure. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. That's why people always refer to the Catholics as, as a cult. Well, but go on. But that's an established, an established religious tradition. With, mm-hmm. And, you know. And? Anyway, yeah. they're, anyway. They're, it's, they're, it's obviously not a razor sharp dividing line of demarcation. No, it's not. Between mainstream religion, sect, and sect and cult. Right. But I so. took a whole class on this. You studied this issue. Studied a lot of groups. I mean, it's, it was as many years ago, but mm-hmm. but it was you know there was an attempt to classify groups based on a few characteristics. characteristics. Right. Cults almost always have a living guru. Yes. They almost always have followers that are turning over all their money and con- most of the things people would consider to be control of their over their lives activities, right, right. like who to marry, who to who to date. Mm, oh. About some ground trace with Lord. Who you live with, right? What you eat, how, you know. Yeah. Um, including tur- some, some extreme ones, turning over all personal possessions whatsoever. Hey, you know. toothbrush. Right. No toothbrush for you. Everything is. Bad to the leader. Get and your toothbrush back. You know. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, the the point was not to get into this big digression about whether it's a cult or a sect or whatnot, but, but that people were criticizing her for membership. for voluntary membership in this organization. Right. Uh, and several leftist thinkers and pounced writers on it. just pounced on that. Wrote, well, actually, I'm saying the opposite. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, no, um, pardon me. Liberals pounced on that. I liberals was pounced on I it. Spoke. Leftists, right? Who are not liberals? <laughs> yes, who are a different group, actually. Um, like, actually, we said, don't care about that. You know what? We don't care about that. We're not going to attack someone for their religious expression. Right. Um, we're going to look at her record. Mm-hmm. And they looked at her record. And it's not amusing, or. Uh, pleasing to the eye. No. It's, um, she is a, uh, handmaiden to the powerful. Yeah, boy. And contorts the law. To serve. In various ways to punish. To punish the poor and serve the rich. Uh, yeah. And revolting. Actually. It's revolting. And, uh, Nathan Robinson did a long piece in Current Affairs. It's on the website. Um, Matthew Sitman and Commonweal, I think, yep. did a, a long piece talking about her record. Mm-hmm. And, and there's no... So, I mean, talk about someone who's qualified. Sure, she's qualified. Of course she's qualified. Yeah. She, just, you know, has a, a strong legal mind. You can, she has a lot of experience. She's got good grades, all those, you all those know, things. top of her class, yeah. whatnot. It's a road scholar. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, the, was it Kaylee? Not Kaylee. What's her name? McInerney? Jay McInerney? No. I don't know who's who's the current White House spokesmodel? Some nitwit. <laughs> the nitwit, the nitwit whose the job House. is to get up and lie for the president. Yeah, that person. Said that she was a road scholar. She was not a Rhodes Scholar. She did not get a scholarship to attend Oxford. <laughs> Named after Cecil Rhodes. <laughs> right. Rapist of Africa. But. Right. But she gra- she graduated from, she had an undergraduate degree from a Rhodes College or something like that. In Tennessee. In Tennessee. Right. Think, so yeah. that does not make you a Rhodes Scholar, <laughs> except in a, in a in the most sarcastic, sarcastic way. Sarcastic way. Oh, Lord have mercy. Anyway. Uh, but look at her record, and then you know record. consider if she's going to be a fair and impartial justice. Well, that, and so, her yeah. record says no. It says no, 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 she won't. No, because if you want to make an argument about her religious practice, that's a good way to get her installed. If sure. you want to make an argument 
about right, her adopting it, children. It riles up the left. It riles, riles up, up the, the left, base. the base, to defend her. To defend her. And kind of fairly. In the, right. The right. It riles up the right. It riles up the, the right. right. Trump's base. The riles right to, to defend, defend her from and that fairly. attack. And, and fairly. And fair, fairly, fairly. <laughs> right. Somewhat fairly, I think. Um, same thing by attacking her adopting children from overseas. Now, mind right. you, as a leftist, I abhor the practice. Of as adopting children from overseas. As a leftist, I abhor the practice of adopting children. Period. Whose parents are alive. Period. Full right. stop. Right. And so... You want to see communities, families stay in their community when... Children stay in their communities whenever possible. Whenever possible. And, and not if, be sold. And not be sold. Right. That's, yeah. that's, that's, not that's be basically it. trafficked to satisfy childless liberals. Right. That's not, I'm not here for that. Yeah. I'm not, and, if, and if liberals would like to they have that discussion, engage I in white am sa- here. White saviorism. Right. They can come talk to me anytime about that. Right. But if they want to attack her, they need to talk about all the other times where they think it's okay. They need to talk about all the people who do this for a living as liberals. Yeah. Remove children from their families, communities, and homes. Right. The adoption for industry. Living. Yeah. If they're not ready to unpack that, they need to shut the fuck up about her. Yeah, about that aspect of her life. About that, yeah. They just need to drop it and move on because all they're doing is getting her appointed right. when they open that can of worms. Right. But, I mean, yeah, seriously, look at her, her record judicial is the only record thing. Yes. and who she works for. We're asking her to work as a judge. Who she favors. We need to look at her judicial record. Her partiality. And that's the and, only thing that matters. And whether, I mean, you know, let's say you're, you believe, your big issue is you believe in constitutional originalism, which, first of all, isn't a thing. Isn't a thing. But let's say you're but, there. But let's say, or, or, or intent, or whatnot, of the framers yeah. and all that. Let's say you do, look at her record and see how well it matches that. those values, because it, it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't. So that's the thing. If you actually want her to not be appointed... And neither did Scalia's, by the way. That was always just bullshit. Just chaff fantasy. thrown up in the air. Chaff, chaff. He's a strict originalist, actually. Yeah. No, actually, he's not. But if you want her to not be appointed, that is the conversation you need to have. You right. need to talk about her record and how she's not fit to be a justice. Because of her extreme bias. Because of her extreme bias. And for reasons that conservatives themselves wouldn't want her on the bench. Um, among the, the examples of her extreme bias are cases of obvious animosity towards the poor. Yep. Extreme animosity towards immigrants or would-be immigrants. Yep. And a, you know, a love of the carceral state, yeah. the mass incarceration, oh, yeah. you know. So sweet, sweet incarceration, baby. I'm not going to so, make the hypocrisy argument. No, because here's the thing: the hypocrisy argument doesn't have any effect on the right. No. If they were capable of being shamed by hypocrisy, they would all be in their <laughs> graves at this point. <laughs> they would. Uh, they'd be leftists. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that said, that said. Um, it leads me back to where I always end up. The liberals aren't trying to fight this regime. No. They're not trying to fight no. this regime. Because they're doing everything it takes to get her appointed. They're right. setting up these straw men that can easily be defended against. So it looks like her defenders have the high ground. Right, right. right. So, I don't know what the plan is, but it's not a good one as far as I can tell. Right. I don't know what the strategy is, but it's not a good one, as far as I can tell. Yeah, because because their donors are the same people. <gasps> oh, did you say that? Was that out loud? <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. So, yeah, she's been very generous to the payday loan industry. Yeah, to the, boy. You know, the prison industry, yeah, etc. They got deep pockets, last I heard. You know? So. So there's that. So speaking of... Liberals not fighting the... The good fight? The good fight. Hey, you want to look around here? I don't. I don't. I can't really talk and eat. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Come so, <laughs> you, you, know, you talk and I'll eat. Like this is the thing. So a lot of times actors have to eat while they're acting. Yeah. And it's hard. It, you have to work at it. You have to learn what? how to do it. Right? No problem for me. <laughs> 
Yes, but you're not on a movie. No. And, but like when you see people eating, like you see, you know, Frodo eating in Lord of the Rings. That's true. I saw a video of me eating and I was so horrified. I, I couldn't believe what I had just witnessed. <laughs> the thing is, if you're supposed to be, yeah, hang on, I'm checking the mail. Uh, just leave it to ripen another day or two. Yeah, that good. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do another lap, I another think, because we're still talking. Still but talking. What was? No, Frodo, Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, if you, you do a scene where you're supposed to be munching Lembus bread while you're mm, talking, Lembus doing bread. exposition. More Lembus bread. Yeah. It's hard to do. <laughs> 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 I suspect, because if you're, like, making chewing noises and mumbling, yeah, so those scenes are looped anyway, but they yeah. have to loop them without the, without the mouth noises, you know? Oh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, it always lacks a lot of authenticity for me when they're no mouth noises, because I know they're smacking. <laughs> well, Gollum does. He Gollum smacks. does. Yeah, he's got some. Yeah. He smacks his. So does, Ma so does uh, Malachi. Good gravy. Oh God. That baby is kind of gross. <laughs> he doesn't hold back expressing his likes and dislikes at yeah. all. Yeah. Drooling, slurping. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um. Uh, so, yeah, so you did not watch the debates. No, no, I did not. I was, I was debate free. That's a negative for watching the debates. <laughs> Probably wise. Here's how I watched the debates. I watched the first 30 or 40 minutes or so on the Chapo Trap House Twitch stream page, oh. which meant that it was on in a window within a window mm -hmm. while they were talking about it mm -hmm. and they were all badly out of sync because of the various the time latencies day, right? um, and this made it kind of bearable because I could sort of alternate between listening to them and just occasionally listen to what mm -hmm. was happening on stage mm -hmm. but even then because it was really just an out of sync cacophony, mm -hmm. after a while I started getting a headache. <laughs> no, you actually did see the debates, basically. <laughs> well, it was 90 minutes. Oh, so you saw a third? I saw about a thir 30, 30, 40 but minutes. But I think of you it. got the gist of it. You saw this, like, out of sync cacophony. I got the gist of it. Which is oh, really right, right, right. <laughs> yes, the, the debate itself was an out of sync cacophony. If you read a transcript, it has to say crosstalk, 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 crosstalk. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like it doesn't make, my take is, well, there's several takes, of course. Yeah. But first of all, in, this, in the context of this particular debate, it does not make any damn sense to talk about a winner or a loser. Are people talking about that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I always try to make things into horse races. Yeah. Like, Trump gained points in the first round, but coming or you know coming oh, up to the back forty, it's like oh, it's Biden in the lead. He's gaining on him, and it doesn't make any damn sense. Okay. Yeah. There's right that. out of the gate, Trump had a goal mm -hmm. with his talking over and bullying and saying these enraging, obnoxious things, mm -hmm. uh, including insulting Biden's genetics. By the way. <laughs> Right. Yes. Which his is like, pedigree. Right. Yeah. His goal was to get and and interrupting constantly. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. His goal was to get Biden stuttering. Oh yeah, yeah. And he really wanted to to see Biden stuttering. Wait. On stage. Biden doesn't have a stutter though. He does have a stutter. He has a stutter, like documented. He has like an actual. He has like an actual in his stutter. Medical record. Here's the thing. It's not that bad. Okay. But he does stutter sometimes. Like, he has he has a pause and he repeats sounds sometimes. It's okay. not that bad. We we think of it as almost non-existent because one of our kids actually has a stutter. Has a stutter. Another I have a stutter. one has you have a stutter. Right. Another one does cluttering. Anyway, yeah. It's but um, he does have a stutter. Okay. Trump was really hoping to get, and of oh, course, stutters get get right. worse when someone is nervous. Yeah, he was hoping to trigger his stutter. He All was right. hoping to trigger enough of a stutter that he could then start, start, <laughs> start, so, uh, 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 that he could then start um, imitating and mocking it, the same way he imitated and mocked that disabled reporter 
with oh, right, the, with right. the, the, the dis distorted hand musculature, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Who doesn't have good muscle control of his hands? Mm -hmm. The same way he uh, mocks, you know, people all the time. The same way he mocks. He, he wanted to mock Biden's disability, the way he mocks disability in general. Okay. And he, he really wanted to do that and was trying to get him to go into a full-blown stutter while he stood there stuttering for 10, 20 seconds or something. Sure. Trying to get words out. That didn't happen. Biden's yeah. been doing this a long time. Yeah, yeah, he's practiced. He's practiced at it. He's yeah. good at not uh, at keeping this particular disability well under control and not rising well camouflaged to the yeah not rising to the bait mm -hmm. and so he didn't get that so right. you know if you're going to call it a, a win and lose situation trump lost that round making himself look obnoxious biden oh, did on, that was hard. <laughs> it's just obnoxious but it really was like watching him it was really like he was trying as hard as he could to make himself look as obnoxious, much more so than in any previous debates. Or any other setting, right? Or any other setting I've ever seen him speak. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Just because of the barrage. And also, it was a gish gallop. Right. That was, a, and you can, okay, I'm imagining the meeting he had with his handlers and his mm -hmm. coaches and whatnot. And they were saying, you need to get Biden stuttering. Right. And you need to confuse the fuck out of him so he doesn't know what you're talking about anymore. Right. So that when he responds in a confused way, you could mock that, too. You mock how confused he is. So that's yeah. why he, he, it was a gish gallop. Right. Okay. Of, you know, random talking points and attacks and slurs and gibberish that pulled out of his ass on the spot. Okay. I just, I just don't want to... I don't want some of these facts slip down the memory hole. Right. Right. Okay. So back last spring, actually only six months ago, not, not even six months ago, we saw Biden on the campaign trail. Yes. And um, this was clearly a man with early, early stage dementia. Yes. And um, it was in like he frequently he would not appear unless his wife was next to him. Yeah. And kind of guiding and pointing him where to go and how to get there. That's all true. Okay, right. And at that time, at that time, the sob story was, he doesn't have dementia. He's had a stutter his whole life. How could yes, you say yes, that about this yes. poor man, this poor disabled man? You're going to come out here and talk about right. how he has dementia. Right. Yep. Um, when, look, I know what I'm looking at. Right. And the thing is... Um, not remembering what city you're in or what state you're in or what race you're in that's not a stutter that's not a stutter right he, and that, he thought he was running for the senate at one point right and that all happened oh, but he, he actually does have a stutter okay like i said though it's oh, not that's right it's like that it's the thing that is actually a greater truth yeah to pull out as the sob story okay right. so i just don't want it, i don't right. want this to fall into that space where we're like oh poor biden he attacked and his disability. It's not, it's not a severe stutter. I probably no. stutter almost as much as he does, you know? Sure, so, right. Um, but no, that's, that's true. And, and that has left a lot of people scratching their heads mm -hmm. as to why Bar uh, Biden in recent appearances seems so much more focused. And this has given... He's high as a fucking kite. This that's has why given rise to all kinds of theories as to or they must be giving him a drug cocktail or something the thing is no one can point to what drug would do that well adderall adderall doesn't do that for people with dementia oh, it okay. just makes them more nervous oh really okay yeah so I don't know, we were talking about something with cocaine I mean, it doesn't because he could just be like okay <laughs> I, I don't think so crack <laughs> is cocaine. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just a concentrated form of it. A different form. Anyway, um, I'm not aware of any... You know what? There are some long-term... Some drugs you can take, that prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. Not street drugs or whatnot. Well, Adderall is a prescription drug too, but yeah. you know what I mean. Okay. That, um, that do help elderly with focus mm -hmm. and clarity. Mm -hmm. There's one called Hydrogen. Mm -hmm. um, these are taken over the long term, though. 
I don't know whether maybe, maybe he's getting just massive vitamin supplements or B12 shots or something. Mm. I can't say. Don't know. But it is a noticeable change that he's better focused recently. Like he's, I don't know. Been replaced with a deep fake? I, uh, you know. <laughs> You said it. You said it. I didn't. I didn't say that. Yeah. No, he's really there, really on stage. Um, but I, it's a little bit of a mystery to me how it is that he's... Was well, so clearly... Just over the course of the summer, in his basement, he was having these long, meandering long lapses. Long, ambling lapses. Was clearly not wholly there. But it's still true that in campaign events, just recently, is just weeks target? ago... Is he attack supporters in a campaign event yet? <laughs> Well, let me we'll get to that. But just recently, he's he was um, still repeating the lies about how he was a teenage oh, yeah. activist in the civil rights movement. Yeah, and that's an old thing that he said that he that not only that's has been debunked shit. repeatedly, but he actually admitted to it in his autobiography that that he made those stories up. <sighs> Okay, sorry, Chris has taken a moment. <laughs> so, so, uh, if I was like, what do they call those people? They're like, right? They're like, right? I, I think they're journalists. Journalists, yeah. Right? Yeah. If I was a journalist, yeah. I would actually read from his autobiography in response to that claim. Right, right. Has anyone taken him to task on this? I don't know, yeah. but he's, yeah, he's still repeating things that are just outright just falsehoods. falsehoods. And let's keep in mind, he suspended his first presidential campaign. Because of an outright falsehood. Because of plagiarism, and he was basically reading this, um, this English politician's yeah. autobiographical speech, yeah. word for word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hoping no one would notice. I don't know what he was hoping. It was bizarre. Yeah, I don't know. I like easily verifiable facts about how his father was not a Welsh coal miner, you know, or something. That's, you know, that was part of his stutter. Yeah. So, uh, so again, but here's where, here's where Biden attacked his supporters. Yeah. Right? Biden, in some of these moments where he was defending himself against Trump, who was calling him radical left, extreme left, and extreme whatnot, left. <laughs> basically disowned a bunch of the policies that are on his website, <laughs> which were did. sops of course did. to try to convince people left of center that to, he... To show up on election day. Or so-called progressives, or center left people, because he's not appealing to leftists. At all. But people on the center left that, you know, he supports Medicare for all. Yeah, yeah. Or even a public option. Yeah. Any goddamn thing, really. But what he did in the debate was talk about what he meant by a public option was this minor Medicaid expansion. Yeah, see? Which is not a public option. option. It's a fuck you. It's only... It's, a, it's like a public option for indigent people re who have reached... A certain age. It's a fuck you. Uh, yeah. So if you manage to survive without health care until... The left is saying embrace Medicare for all and progressives okay. to the left are saying it's close enough. Come on, you gotta vote for him because he's giving you practically everything you want. Look, Bernie Sanders was on a committee that helped him draft his platform. Yeah. And yeah. then you're like, well, show me his position papers. <laughs> Let's see. Crickets. Yeah, it's like the, and and he basically did that over and over. Yeah. Throw the the left, the actual left. I, I need to emphasize here, Medicare for All is an extremely popular platform. Yeah. Idea. It's not, and, and I gotta tell you, it's not actually, it's not that far to the left. No, it's actually what seventy nine percent of Democrats support it. Yeah. And you know some like. 49% of Republicans support it. Yeah. Something like that. But if you can just But get, that's that's too radical if you left. Could just get white supremacists to like him, everything would be better. 
So that's where his real problem, white supremacists don't so like So he's him. trying to outflank Trump to the right. Yeah. To avoid charges that he's a radical far leftist, which is laughable to begin with. But yeah. The only effective attacks Biden levied against Trump are a couple of moments where he stood there in disbelief laughing at him. I wanted to see more of that. I would have liked to see a half hour of that. Yeah. And I would have liked to see Trump stuttering, you know, but... But, oh well. Um, but no, it, Biden did not make any kind of an effective case to anyone left of Ronald Reagan. Mm. And just, just for the record, um, like, like only 10% of the country is, left, is to the right of Ronald Reagan. Right. So like 90% of the country is to the left of Ronald Reagan. Just... Just for, like, um, put that in perspective. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was not promising. No. And Disappointing as hell. And Trump also was signaling what he's planning to do, his strategy going into the election. Yes. Which is to activate militias and white supremacists yeah. to intimidate and bully. And this is the thing I think that Biden does not understand. That if he's actually standing next to 45, there's no way that he can appeal to white supremacists if 45 is there. Right? <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. He's standing in the way. He's standing in the way of them he's getting standing, close to their he's favorite sh- white He's standing in the, his, his light. Right. Yeah. So there's just, um, like that, I don't know why he thinks that strategy is the one, but, you know, whatever. To appeal to people on the right. Um, So people made a lot of hay about the fact that he mentioned, he was asked to to denounce the Proud Boys, tell them to stand up. To to denounce white supremacy. Well, Well, that was the ask. Uh, he was asked specifically about the Proud Boys. Well, he was. Yeah, I think so. Well, I thought the ask was that he would denounce white supremacy, were, and he kept saying, well, what are you talking about? Who do you mean? There what do you were mean? several are you talking asks. About? And, and then Biden says, the Proud Boys. Okay, Proud Boys. And then he responded to that. Trump, t- something like, somebody said, I don't know if, because I wasn't watching that closely, I read, I read a transcript. Okay. But someone said, ask the Proud, tell the Proud Boys to stand down. Not and he words, said... Yeah. No, they did. It's pretty close to those words. Okay. To stand down. And Trump said something like, Proud Boys, stand back. And what Stand was by. Stand by. <clears throat> stand back and stand by. And like within 15 minutes, they had merchandise up. They had merchandise up. It was all over their website. It was all over their discussion boards. Standing that They're by, getting sir. ready. Get right. ready yourselves. Mm-hmm. And people make a lot of hay about that, which was terrible. But they also, oh. yeah, they're also parsing it. On the peop- right, pe- right wing people are parsing the shit out of that, and saying he doesn't support white supremacy. He's not a white supremacist. Well, also, I, like I've got. Uh, this is why I'm not on Facebook because people I like otherwise and am friends with, I find myself arguing about what a white supremacist, supremacist is. is. Right, it's like, do you think a white supremacist is only something who, a person who rolls around in a pickup truck with a Confederate flag and a and gun rack and a clan hood? Clan hood on? A white supremacist is someone who believes in the inherent superiority of the white race and believes that other people shouldn't have access to the same privileges status, in privileges, social services in society. In society, right. So, and there are a lot of them. Right, right. Actually, the, the right parsing, the parsing of the right, is that the Proud Boys is not white supremacist because their uh, leader is an Afro-Cuban Latino. <laughs> so, therefore, they are not white supremacists. I, I gave up trying to understand this shit. Hey, you know. Uh, is their leader no longer Gavin McGinnis? I don't know. I don't know. So was... the deal is, but, but here's the deal. The definition... That you just gave, yeah. which is an accurate definition of a white supremacist, yeah. does not include the race of the person who holds those beliefs. Absolutely not. Any person can be a white supremacist if they choose to. Right. And they're saying things like, you know, it's ridiculous to think that, that a lot of Americans are white supremacists. I'm like, like, is it? Is it? Look around you. 
Are you not amused? <laughs> anyway, so I just, I have to give up and get back off Facebook. So I was on Facebook today for, you know, an, hour, an hour. Oh, that was for lols, but go on. Well, for lols, I kind of want to check in with people because the people only place on social media that I like talk to my friends and relatives now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't, my relatives aren't on Twitter. You know, yeah. my friends in real life aren't on Twitter. Right. Mostly. Yeah. A few are. But, yeah, there's some here and there. But, um... Yeah, Suzanne Trapp just trying to get me on Twitter. I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. I don't happening. understand what happened. I, I kind of spent the last... The only reason I know what's happening on Twitter is because I've been on Twitter since 2008. Right? Yeah. So... I remember that. Right. Good Lord. I got pretty obsessed early on. It was really fun early on. Yeah. Give me a minute. I'm going to do a farmer's blow. Oh, sorry. I'm pausing then. That was so disgusting. <laughs> that was almost entirely clean. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> Nothing but net. Nothing but net. <laughs> right out the nostril. Nothing but net. <laughs> Straight through. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Proud boys, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, the more... Okay, so the more worrying thing to me in Trump's talk was not the mention of the Proud Boys. Nope. But it was that he later said, very specifically, prepare to monitor the election. <laughs> Which is a cry. Get ready to go and and yeah, make and crimes. help make sure that you know voting is is ha legitimate. Voting is happening. I don't remember his exact words, but mm -hmm. he specifically activated rando self-appointed militias and and um to get to the polls and keep them safe to go to the polls to be poll watchers mm -hmm. if you want to be a poll watcher you sign up to be a poll watcher with one of the parties yeah and they appoint a certain number of poll watchers they're allowed to be in the room they're allowed to challenge registrations and votes in some states you know there's a procedure to That's be a thing. poll watcher right. showing up with a fucking ak outside the polls on election day it's is not, not a procedure, procedure to be a poll watcher no actually no that's again for the record that's a crime yeah, yeah. and it's already been happening yeah in states doing early voting in virginia people were showing up mm -hmm. blocking access to the polls and intimidating voters this seems like a good moment to point out and recall a certain um, uh, Mr. Mr. Clinton that showed up at the last election, campaigning inside the polls for people. Oh yeah, he was he was he was, he was violating the uh, the regs on how close you can be to uh, to voting and, camp and campaigning. Yeah, right. Excellent, excellent, yeah. Right. Just kind of depending on yeah. the state and the county, you maybe not even allowed to have signs near the polling yeah, place. Yeah, that's true. That's within a hundred yards or a hundred feet or whatever. But he kind of just like walked in and did it and dared anyone to stop him, you know? Yeah, yeah. And no one did. Yeah. yeah. So I'm feeling yeah. that same vibe here. Right. Now yeah. let's right. just do it. And see what happens. Who's gonna stop you? So there's this. So I'm actually expecting shit to go down on election day in an ugly way <laughs> shit's gonna go down no, i think that's a given right here now yeah now as to exactly what kind of influence that has on the outcome i think that influence on the outcome will be relatively small mm -hmm. because everyone knows if you want to steal an election you don't do it retail <laughs> no 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 that's a wholesale situation and frankly all he has to do is manipulate the electors in Republican-controlled states. Right. So, the, ching. so there's lots going on, like... So I'm calling Michigan for 45 now. It seems likely. Yeah. Um, in some states where the electors are appointed... Yeah, and I know we have a Democratic governor. We do not have a Democratic infrastructure. Yeah. That's been hauled out over the last 30 years. Yeah. Uh, almost, it's like near entirety. Right. Gone. In some states like Pennsylvania... It's, they can just appoint a new slate of electors who yep. do not have any legal obligation, or constitutional, state constitutional obligation, to uphold the the actual the popular vote totals. Totals. Nope. Um, and that'll happen. That's. I mean, so everyone's it's freaking out. It's already underway. But that's that's the deal. That's what's going on. They're already doing purges. So if you feel a conscious motive, conscience, motivation to vote third party, I'm here to tell you that you are allowed to vote your conscience at all times in every way, every place. I 
believe that too. I'm really scratching my head because I have not... It's awfully late in the game for me. I normally, by now, I would be extremely well decided as to exactly what strategy to employ. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing on election day. Well, you got your ballot already. Uh, I have my... Yeah, well, all right. But yeah, that's other... Also, people are saying in some states, vote in person if you can. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good tactic. It's not. It's... it's you're asking vulnerable people to put themselves at risk for a process that cannot be and not just functional. not just at risk of COVID, but at risk of violence, risk of physical violence, risk of COVID. Yeah. Um, when the fact is, right, the game is up. So maybe do that if you feel that you're low risk. I don't feel that I'm low risk, and I'm not. No. A, I'm around people who are not low risk. So yeah. No. So I don't want to become a vector. So I'm not. not we're going we're to gonna do we're, do the drop off again yeah. of our of our absentee balance. So, uh, you know, I always say to vote your conscience. Whatever that is. You don't need to tell me. You don't need to right. please me. You don't need to impress me with right. your vote. V- vote however you feel is right. Right. Or not at all. If that's what you feel is right. I'm, it's it's okay. You're allowed. If no one else gives you permission, I do. Yeah. So, it's... But it's... Uh, that's the thing. It's going to be fucked up beyond measure this year. Yeah. Already it is. It's already... And Here's where I want to turn briefly Mm -hmm. to the national news. Briefly. All right. Grace doesn't even want to talk about it. I don't want to go down this fucking rabbit hole distraction. I spent enough time at the Vermont Country Store. I need to do this too. (laughs) Jesus. Online. Online. Oh, look at that. I haven't seen those since 1978. We need one of those. Yeah, I need one. Let's spend the rest of our money on it. Stuff from mail order stuff. (laughs) No, no. But, my but I think we, we, we probably... What's your favorite meme? Like my favorite uh, COVID meme yeah. is like the picture of this like this uh, Renaissance picture of this like uh, Pope wearing this foofy ass outfit and the miter and everything and it had like a little dog <laughs> and the little caption reads me wearing all the stupid shit I bought while I was in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. Aren't I cute? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that. I didn't... Well, I did buy stupid shit. Yeah. I bought an awful lot of books that I haven't had time to read because I never have time to read. Well, but, I, you know. But, you know, I would have done that anyway, so. I did hand it with the girls and turned my fingernails orange. That was that was funny because you've now got orange stripes on your fingernails. No, it's fantastic. I, so I'm, I've been painting my nails. I've, I have never done manicures in my life. Right. But this is so ridiculous looking. I'm doing manicures. They painted your nails yeah. to cover up the orange stripes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, talk so. about your distraction. Then go for it. Okay. Uh, no, I was, uh, the people already know that while I was furloughed, well, the garden was a distraction, you yeah, know, that right? Was good. We're still harvesting herbs. We're still harvesting, man. Some, some peppers are still coming out of yeah. there. Oh, I picked a nice pepper today. Yeah. This thing is gorgeous. Oh, it's a purple one. Purple pepper. Yeah, cool. Sweet pepper. Yes. So, that's, oh, we'll keep going. Oh, come on. This is like four miles. It's good. It's good for us. I haven't gotten out for a walk in months. Okay. But no, you want to talk about the national news, and I don't want to talk about the national news for another mile. Well, you know what? We'll turn around partway. Okay. Good enough. Um, Top of the hill. Oh, shit. i got to talk fast then. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So, uh, you've probably heard <laughs> that a, a large, that, um, a trusted, close advisor to Donald Trump, Hope Hicks, Hick Hopes. <laughs> uh, Stop, don't make fun of her name. Go, Come on. Okay. People call me Gray Spots. Hope Hicks decided came down with. <laughs> came down with the Rona. She tested positive for COVID nineteen and had symptoms. Apparently, Trump was around her. Also started having symptoms. Mm-hmm was supposed to get tested before the debate. And did not. Decided not to, so did not submit a, a test before the debate. Went in uh, b- claiming that it was he arrived too late, which is not true. He actually was there like five hours early. Yeah. Uh, went into the debate, mm-hmm. which was set up to be as COVID safe as probably possible. Indoors. By the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah with a big indoor venue that was mostly empty mm-hmm. with the exception of several groups of chairs well spaced of people widely spaced mm-hmm. and masked 
in the audience. Yep. The Except Trump children for the Trump family did not, mask although they up. had agreed to mask, refused to mask up on site. They would not wear their masks. Clinic staff actually came around to give them masks and they waved them away, refused to put them on. Might be poisoned. So that they wouldn't be on camera masked. During the debate, Trump continued with this relentless equivocation about masks, yep. saying, I think masks are great, and then mocking Biden for wearing masks. Mm -hmm. He said he could be 200 feet away, he'd have the biggest mask anyone's ever seen. You know? Yeah. Um, so his family didn't wear masks. And then after the debate, I think, yep. even though Trump was having symptoms and yep. knew that hope that, that hope hips had been, <laughs> had been hip hops. Had you stop! Been, just leave the woman's name alone. Okay. Had been, <laughs> Have mercy on me! I'm a sinner. Had been tested positive. Mm -hmm. Continued with his. He continued with all the planned activities, activities. including a big reception. Yep. For his Supreme Court justice, which was supposedly outside and safe, but turned out to be a super spreading event. Turned out to be a super spreading event, and the pictures show that people were just lined up in rows, unmasked, unmasked, largely unmasked, with like a few reporters crammed in there, looking nervous, wearing masks. Yep. That's got to be nerve wracking as hell. Yep. And then it was an outdoor event, but there was a reception inside, too, where people were also unmasked. And there are pictures of that. Mm -hmm. We didn't all these, each other so I keep the number keeps going up, but I keep seeing more and more people who were at this event are testing positive. Yeah. He, so Trump also did a couple of indoor fundraising events, mm -hmm. unmasked. Mm-hmm. And then he himself had a positive test result. And I, I suspect, I, it's hard to get, there's a lot of conflicting information about the sequence of events. Mm -hmm. But I think that he went to these indoor unmasked fundraising events after getting his own positive test result back. Oh, hey. I think. A little gift for the funders there. Anyway. Keeps on giving. So now Rick Scott, Chris Christie, and Kelly at least Conway. three. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, Team effort. What's her what, What's her name again? I don't know. Conway. Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne. I guess like Carlene. Kellyanne Conway, mm -hmm. who was outed by her daughter, who said that when her daughter realized that Kellyanne had been lying about her test results online, oh. outed her, and then she had to come clean. They yeah. don't have a very good family dynamic. Let's no. just put it that way. Things are hard there. It's a mess. Jesus. If, I, if ever, like, a teen needed to be emancipated. Yeah, this is the situation. God right damn. There. Anyway. <laughs> so, and then, like, there's at least three other, I think Ron Johnson, like, mm -hmm. at least three or four other Republican senators. Mm -hmm. um, also the head of the RNC. Yep. Uh, and there's, there's, you know, I've been away from the news for a few I'm hours. I'm only one degree of separation away from her, by the way. Are you? Yeah. I've been away from the news for a few hours, and I don't doubt that tonight I'm going to find more. that there's 12 more, you know. More positives. So uh, there's a point to this, right? Yep. I'm getting to a point of yep. how this affects the election. Yeah. Meanwhile... We're not getting consistent or reliable news about Trump's health. Trump's actual condition. He is in Walter Reed. He, the private suite receiving excellent health care. Yeah, I don't. As you should, given his status. There's no way of knowing. That's a sarcastic voice. Okay. Go on. There's no way of knowing what his individual risk is. Nope. And what the outcome will be. Nope. But we know that he is at an elevated risk because of his age and his comorbidities, including obesity. Right? As am I. But go on. So, odds are he will survive this. Yep. Odds are in his favor. I don't... I personally, looking at some figures and tables, I put his actual risk of death somewhere around 8%. I have no idea if that's accurate or not. Yeah, that's all in mind. 
but it may be as high as 16. Yeah, that's um, anyway, but again, odds are still in his favor. They may not be very good odds, but <laughs> big in his favor, but, but they're in his favor. favor. Um, should he die? We are completely in uncharted territory with yeah. respect to the presidential election. Yeah, that's yeah, that's um, that's that goes in new waters. This has this situation has never been tested before. No, nope. we've tested a lot of things. Though. If, if he dies after the election but before the inauguration, we got that. there kind of are some established principles norms. and norms yeah. of succession mm -hmm. um, to, to handle that situation. Mm -hmm. But what becomes of everyone's vote? If, if he, he dies before the election yeah. and Pence is the sitting president, then, then what? Yeah, and I, I want to clarify that at this point in time, many people have already voted. That's true. So they may have already voted for him. So it's not a matter of just like, does he make it until election day or not? No, no. no. The election's already underway. We're having the election right now. And it's also not clear what happens if he drops out. Right. Or if he becomes incapacitated. Yep. And whether or not a 25th Amendment is invoked. Yeah, incapacitated is easier. Easier, but not... But you know he's not going to make anything easy for anyone. Yeah, he's not going to follow any norms or any expected yeah, ex expectations. Right. Anyway, so just when you're having your election day nightmare scenarios, think of what happens if Trump actually dies the day before election day. Woo. And you think he'll be a long haul? Because that's from the hall. People are then trying to change their votes. Right. Who already voted are trying to change their votes yep. or have their votes counted for something. Yeah. And it's completely unclear legally what happens next. Yep. That. And then we and have meanwhile, you have court. militias roaming. Militias roaming. And a Supreme Court that's down one justice. Because we would have to confirm the justice that's been appointed in like four weeks. It doesn't seem likely. It doesn't seem likely. Especially if a bunch of senators are now unable to Well, that's the thing. Vote. How, so, uh, if any of yeah. these senators die, so what if the we might not have a quorum in the... <laughs> and, the vote. and then... And the they won't have a majority. Could get deadlocked. <sighs> so much fun. What a party. So, Interesting this time. is all news that will affect... It's national news. There's not a whole hell of a lot individuals can do about it. No. But it is something that is going to affect the economy and what's happening in the states, what's happening with your local white supremacists and militias and, yeah. and groups. And it ain't good, folks. No, I, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like it has the importance that you're giving it. I think it's kind of a national clusterfuck. Like, on the national level? Yeah. I don't think it's going to have the kind of local impact that you imagine. So, okay, so let's say that he doesn't die and whatnot. How does how does the Rona thing affect mm -hmm. and, the, and him sickening all these political people inside the Beltway people and whatnot? A little bit pissed off. Um, a few people, you know, a handful of people are going to be real pissed. How does that actually affect the election, if it does? I don't know. I don't, I don't think it does. <sighs> Anyway, we've been talking for almost two hours, which is my favorite kind of conversation. Indeed. And we're f back home. We've walked a few miles. I don't know exactly how far. But yeah, more than three. But it was Less good because I really needed to get some to exercise. Some yeah, that's true. I needed to walk, walk some of, of my stress and frustration. But um, do you want to go, Bunny? Go. You can do it. You can make it. We have bunnies that have been eating all our food, and they're the size of cougars. I know. <laughs> they're like, I keep thinking we should eat them, but... Uh, it's such a pain. To traumatize the kids. It's such a pain to shoot them. You That's gotta true. Like, we looked into getting a gun that we could use to shoot rabbits. But, yeah, no. They're, a good one is quite expensive. They are. <laughs> like one, I mean, one you can really aim. Right. You know, it's, it's easy to, to get a ch cheap pellet gun, but... Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, so what do you, uh, I've been, you did a lot of talking. I, yeah. You did a lot of talking this time. Mm -hmm. I've sort of ended it with me ranting most of the. Well, yeah, this is something I, I don't. Because you don't get as worked up about national. I just don't. Politics at all. No, I just don't. It's not a thing for me. Yeah. And I really feel like this is broadly writ large a distraction. It's a distraction. Now, instead of talking about the debates, we're talking about him. And are you, are you sympathetic? He's, he's got the oh, wrong yeah, one. He's, so, is, he's so sick. This is the other thing. He's so sick. You've got to all pray the, for him. All the liberal commentators and columnists are lining up, lining up to, to be tell nice. us how we have to... Pray how for it our would president. be indecent not indecent. to feel empathy and pray and give him all the best wishes in the world and all that. And I... My response to that is that I don't make the rules, yeah. right? The universe is made up of hydrogen, irony, and karma. <laughs> no, I hope he lives long enough to repent. He's got a lot of repenting to do. Right, but my point is this that about the universe is there is a great mechanism of salvation and forgiveness. Oh, the that paraclesis, question. right? That question. Right, yeah. the Christ, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, which, you know, you can be a terrible person, you can do bad things. I'm a terrible person. You can do all kinds of bad things, whatnot. You can be forgiven. Truly. Um, you can redeem yourself. Truly. You can experience justice, righteous justice, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and redeem yourself both in the eyes of God and the eyes of men. Absolutely. Right? Right. And, yeah, we hope that he lives long enough to experience that. Absolutely. But there's also... Like gaslighting and kiss my ass? There's also Jesus. a mechanism of retribution built into the universe where without that embrace of the salvific principle, yeah. you're ground up by the wheels. You, yeah. you got the wheels turning and you're going to be ground up, up by them. Just the same wheels you turn. And he yeah. has been an utter mocker of the poor, the, the disenfranchised, the downtrodden, the sick, and the, sick the dead, dead. Right? right? And so for me to be personally empathetic to him being sick, I'm not a good enough person to do that. No, no, no. And you yeah. know what? I should probably feel bad about that, but I'd have to be a better person, person to feel bad ahead. about that. I want justice for him. I don't want his family to suffer. Baron probably doesn't deserve any of this. No. But... The rest of them are adults. Yeah, made their own they, choices. They made their beds. They stuck with him through thick and thin yeah. for power and wealth. And So, you know, this is how it goes. Here they are. As Rod Dreher, actually, I find yourself. myself agreeing with Rod Dreher. He tweeted, after hubris comes nemesis. I'm like, that is you know. how it works. Right, and people were attacking him. Like, no. Saying, Rod, how could you mock... How could you mock a sick man? At a time like this. And I couldn't resist putting like evil clown faces reactions. on each of reactions on each of their right. So, so yeah. I it's so, so we're having this conversation instead yeah. of other conversations, and that's, that's true. all this is. That's true. Because frankly, he's going to get the finest medical care available. Yeah, on he's already the gotten, planet. gotten an experimental um, right. No, he's going to so he'll get the best treatment. possible treatment. Right. He will likely recover, yeah. and then he'll talk to us about how. We don't need any restrictions because it's just the damn it's flu. It's no big deal. It's right. not a big deal and I survived it. Right. So, right. he will not make the finest medical care available for the rest of us right. to survive it. He's working now to take it away, to take medical so, care away from people. That's the only conversation I'm interested is. in having. Yeah. And that comes after he recovers from this. Yeah. Or he dies. I don't know. It actually doesn't matter. Yeah. Because all that's happening is we're talking about things that don't matter. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, yeah, that's right. You know. There we are. So I don't have a lot to say on that subject. Well, you had a lot to say on other subjects. Sure. But it's true. But I'm, you know, I'm kind of a political junkie. It's not good for my mental health. No, it's not. But, um, but I'm kind of a political junkie, especially this. And I'm mostly watching all the people supposedly who are the opposition, who are the left, who are this... Like, bending over backwards to kiss his butt now that he's ill. You mean liberals? Yes. Yeah, leftists aren't doing that. Yeah. 
supposedly. It's, it's a, on the left. Oh, it's supposedly. And left. it's nauseating. Oh, it's utterly nauseating. It's really revolting. Don't pretend. Yeah. This pretense is unbecoming. Yeah. I have sympathy. I do not have empathy. Ah, yeah. There's a distinction to be made between what you feel deep down mm -hmm. and what you would do for someone, for any human being. Any human you being. Know? In harm's way. And I, I don't wish him to die. I don't wish him to be harmed or suffer. No. I wish him to receive his... Full justice. His Full measure of justice. justice. And to redeem himself as a human being. Indeed. All right. Uh, are we done? I think we're done. Okay. Let's get some scotch bonnets. How about just some scotch? Hey. Take care, everyone. Bye.